Dit sal Gersman Adams sy dertigste jaar gewees het as leer van die umbrella. Dis is my kaskoot, Dad. Terrell Mizang! How long are you staying? I'm headed back now, now. We're two weeks away from the carnival. Stay for that at least. We are an umbrella man, bruh. No, no, what you tell? I don't want this. This is your place now. That's what your father wanted. And I know he had good reason. Jerome, let me take the Kuma Club off your hands. The black was soft, man. It's falling apart. You see, I want to revive it, make it shine. How much is the club on? About a million before taxes. What? Are they supposed to pay back a million rand? Uh, you have several options. Me? Yes, you. Thank us taking the club. It's the Kuma. It's Auntie V. It's the minstrels. All down the drain. Well, I can always bury you and bury your Auntie Valerie next to your father. Well, what did your daddy do? Remember when we were like this and we used to slip wallets at the carnival? It was easy and we made lots of crying. What if we did it again? What? Bank job. <laughs> My organization requires a five machine. Find this fee. But make sure that is I'll get a team with a leave. Are you tiger? Depends who's asking. Sometimes people call me leopard. <laughs> Why are you asking me all these questions about bank? So you need money to steal money. <laughs> Equipment, materials, vehicles. I'm gonna need collateral. Oh, that's my BM. Great cars. What year? 1983, 320i. It's a classic. Classic piece of You see, 1983, that's where you lost me. The really exciting discovery is... It's the secret tunnels. Come here, of water. The walls of the safe is five inch thick. Sorry, ma. It's an inch. That's two and a half centimeters. The walls of the bank vault is 13 centimeters thick. The carnival is upon us! Let's go, let's go! Wait, wait, wait! Okay, go, go, go! What are you planning at my bank? This thing better work like clockwork. Don't have a plan B. Put the gun in here! Because I've got a gun, I'm a pizza, it's dark, dark, dark. Hello, everybody. Hello, Val. Hello. Hey. So nice to see you all. Um, I have watched the movie twice in the last 24 hours. So oh. I'm very excited. <laughs> um, so How's the experience? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> How has the experience been so far? Um, just this whole, you know, the festivals and experience and everybody's feedback. Yeah, we 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 blown away. I mean, we we got into Toronto. We were kind of very excited that the the festival chose a film, but you know, I guess some festivals choose films for different reasons. But, um, but what it feels like, we've got this like, great confidence now because of all the journalists we've had, uh, we've probably had like maybe 25 interviews over the last three days and every single one of them loved the film. So we're suddenly feeling like, okay, cool, we've done something okay. We're like, the people are liking what we've done. So it feels good. Yeah, I have to say, um, you know, as a, a film critic, we have to watch a lot of, of movies and we're getting into that time of year where it's going to be like, you know, 10 screenings a week. Um, and so it's not often that I want to watch something again. Um, and with this film, it was so much fun um, that, and, and just so many layers of, of story and filmmaking and, and uh, cinematography that I just loved it. So let's jump in and talk about this experience. <laughs> um, you know, for me, it was a little bit like a, a few different movies. Obviously, it is of its own, but when you're trying to get other people to get excited about it, of course, you want to say it's a little bit like this movie or this movie. And for me, um, you've got a little bit of the Goodfellas in here, and you've got a little bit of like, uh, uh, I want to say, you know, it's that heist movie, and I and I want to say, you know, I you've got a little bit of a George Clooney <laughs> heist movie in there a little bit as well. Um, when you were putting this film together um, in the location that you're shooting, how important um, was it for you to really show the culture of the area that you were in? 
Uh, yeah, it was it was key. It was so important. We the first thing we did uh, when we went down to Cape Town is we spoke to um, the the guys who run the Boer Carp. They are a group of guys, a guy called Azmi, who deals with all of the because there's so many commercials shot in the in the Boer Carp and so many feature films shot in the Boer Carp from international uh, features set there. So we went to him first of all and we said, listen, we need to get you on board. We need to speak to the community. We want to. We don't want to do what what the international films do and commercials do. Is they don't interact with the community at all. They just they go there. They throw money at the street. They say we're shooting. We're closing it down. There's money, and they've got dollars, and they can do that. You know. Um, so, but we wanted to really have them as part of it, and we wanted the community to be in the shots and as extras, etc. So, we went to them. Uh, the, the Muslim community wanted to have a, a read of the script just to make sure that we, we weren't um, portraying them in any negative way. Um, and so they read the script and they loved it. They had, they had two comments which we changed. The one was that they weren't happy that the nightclub, that the, there was a nightclub in the Burkha because it's such a big Muslim community. So we changed our nightclub. We had, um, it's, it's, a, it's a bar we shot at in town to make it look like it was the Burkha. The in, interior was different. But we covered up all the drinks cabinets, etc., and so there was no alcohol served there. And we made sure that in the after tears scene, in the second scene of the film, third scene, we made sure that everyone had orange juice on the tables and not alcohol. Um, so, so yeah, it was it was hugely important that we had their buy-in, um, and that we used all of those the people in the in the film. Well, you could tell that you you spent some some time making sure that things were represented correctly. And like you said, a lot of people can go in to a different area, shoot a film, and kind of ignore everything around it, get it done, and leave. But in this film, I I felt like I was there. Um, and in the beginning of the movie, I don't know if all three of you, any of you, can answer this, but. Um, I felt like the different coloring that was used in the tight shots that you used, um, it was very personal. So I felt, you know, like um, it's a very intimate, the beginning uh, part of the movie. And then as we get into the heist and putting everything together, then the world seems to get a little bit bigger. You know, you have all of these different terrains you have to go to it through and people that you have to interact with. And so the world gets bigger. And then when we get back to the end, it gets back to those intimate colors, those warm feelings, because now, you know, we're back together with our main characters in their world. Um, I don't know if that was meant to be or something that I read into that. No, 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 no. Um, that's that's completely, I, I wish my cinemat cinematographer was here now because we, we did all that on purpose. That's amazing. <laughs> to pick that up because we actually avoided in our color palette, our production designer and, and Mateo, we decided that everywhere we shot, you'll notice uh, that there's no blue at all in the, in the front of the film. So all the wardrobe, mm -hmm. all the locations, we avoided blue as much as you could. The only blue we had was in a couple of the buildings, but every single person's wardrobe was, we took the color blue out of it, except for when they got into the tunnel and the bank. There was only time we, we, we allowed color into the wardrobe and color into the lighting, because it was very different to their world, exactly like you said. It was cold, it was blue, and then when we went back again, we went, reverted back to the, because we used browns, oranges, yellows, it was a very kind of, we try to have a nostalgic feel about it. So although it's set in 2022, because it was speaking about District 6 and about um, the Boer Carp, we, we wanted to feel like it was an, uh, like almost a period piece in a way that not everyone would notice, only some very, very sharp uh, journalists would notice. <laughs> But, uh, but that was the idea with the color palette. Yeah, that's great that you noticed that. Oh, that's so cool. Thank you. And guys, I mean, what did you feel about that? Um, you know, being in this world that's being created I and mean, going from this warm to this, you know, and it, I think it goes with the story as well, is that the beginning is very warm, very family, very friendly, except for when we're talking about dad and son <laughs> um, for, you know, some minutes there. But but like everyone knows each other it's this very small area in the beginning where everybody knows everybody's business and then as you get through the the movie trying to now commit this crime this heist now the world gets vastly bigger in your world so tell us a little bit about um you know going from those intimate moments and then out into like the fact that you're going to do this heist 
what's lovely is for me the the community and this uh, uh, that neighborhood and uh, the, the representation is, is kind of why I wanted to get into this film, is why I wanted to tell this story. Uh, and what's fun, with the lovely observation that you made there, Val, is uh, what's cool is that they, they start intimate and they make sure that they are together before they go out into the world. So um, uh, Jerome needs his team with him. It, it, uh, you can't go about... Uh, there's, there's an, there was a, an attempt to go on, like, how am I going to solve this? He goes to, to meet uh, to try to resolve it on his own, and it doesn't work, and so he puts, he puts his family back together. Um, and, and, and I think that's, that's the heart of it. That's the heart of it. Mm -hmm. What I liked about it, uh, Val, was what John and Matteo captured kind of magnificently for me was this sort of, I, I loved how they played with the color, but it also captured this sort of nostalgia. Of, of, of that community and going back to, 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 to family. And um, I mean, I think the film also starts with everybody being sort of disconnected. And only once Jerome comes into, the, in, in, into play, does everything start, it starts to piece together like this puzzle. And only then you start seeing the bigger picture, which, and I think John and, and Matteo captured that beautifully. I mean, for me, it feels a bit like once upon a time in Hollywood, sort of, you know, just in terms of the tone and the feel and, you know. Minus the murder at the end. Oh, of course. <laughs> I don't want to give anybody the wrong idea. I don't want to give away anything about the movie, but um, there were no flamethrowers, unfortunately, um, and, and the murder at the end. But yes, I, I totally feel that. And what I loved so much about your two characters is that there, there's something that we can all connect to, especially right now, is I think that all of us at some point or another have been in a situation where um, you need to decide how far you're going to go to keep your family together, to keep something that you all care about together. And, you know, in this instance, it's, you know, you've got your, your aunt and your family, but most of all, you've got this place that represents a big part of the community that's going to be taken away, right? So how far will you go um, as a human? I think we all have these instances every day to like keep what we've worked so hard for. You know, in this instance, you're going pretty far. You're putting together this heist, um, which can be very serious. But then also there's so many comedic moments um, that, you know, I just found myself laughing um, out loud, uh, you know, just these little one-liners. And very much, like I said, kind of Ocean's Eleven meets Goodfellas, meets, you know, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. But, you know, but um, at the same time, I think it's it's a lot warmer than both of those movies, just the relationships um, that you have between each other and everyone else in the heist. But some very fun moments kind of putting your crew together <laughs> and figuring out, like, who's going to do what. And both everybody looking at each other at a few points, like, this this is ridiculous. <laughs> like, are we really going to do this? Um, do, um, do you both have just kind of a, a favorite moment um, between you two in the movie? I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I guess one of my favorite moments in the film is the first meeting of Mortimer and Jerome in the beginning. It's this sort of rekindling of a friendship that, that's sort of been separated for the last 10 years. And especially playing that moment and shooting that moment on the day was it really, you felt it, you know? Um, and that was truly, a, a, you could really feel the sense of these characters and, and how they've missed each other and how they've needed each other in some way, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and and for, for my character in particular, he's been in prison for, for so long. Um, Jerome is his family. You know, he's, he's, he's known him since he was a kid. And, and, and that for me is one of, I mean, I have lots of favorite moments in this film. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I know too many lines of the other characters, I must just admit. <laughs> 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 um, but that's one of my favorite moments because it's so heartfelt, it's so real. Um, and then, I mean, can I say the entire film is my favorite moment? <laughs> I mean, you can. <laughs> How about you? Did you have um, a line or a moment um, 
that you just really, really enjoyed doing in the movie? Uh, any scene that involves uh, Keenan and I eating. Yeah. <laughs> And, yes, and there was and there was a lot of that. So uh, we lived in the same hotel uh, as kind of like a look after yourself. And, and uh, Keenan and Shamila, who plays uh, Keisha, um, they they looked after me. And so Keenan was was often at the like it was we brought the family off set home, you know. Yeah. Um, so there was there was some real relationship dynamics that started coming out around the rituals of food. So. Uh, like the the eating of the Gatsby on the on the car bonnet at the uh, at, um, at some point the, the like there was a lot of food that represents the culture that also represents this relationship. Um, that was that was different. yeah that's great, hundred percent. Jacques, if I can, sorry if I can just jump in there. I think also food within that community is such a big thing. Even while we were shooting, we'd be offered food from like a random <laughs> neighbor, you know. And I, I was, no, but within that community, it's such a big thing. Like food is what brings people together, especially within this community. And I think, I mean, now that you said it, Jacques, I was like, yes, of course. We ate. There were so many scenes of us just eating. But it does, it does, it's so true to the community, the family, and who they are, you know? And you could you could feel that a lot. John, I feel like you need to put together like a recipe or like an eat along list with the movie so people can like watch the movie with friends and family and like make dishes <laughs> as, they're, as they're eating because i'm italian so we put food with everything like how are you feeling let's let's feed you you're not feeling anything let's still feed you so and you know and and so i totally got that um my dad is a jazz musician so there were a lot of moments for me um that kind of hit home um you know like jack when you when you get your dad's horn and you have that moment and that shot we were talking about the coloring earlier just that warm jazz vibe you know of the browns and the goldens and then you have the horn and it's so close in that moment um you kind of as an audience member kind of hold your breath because we don't really know a lot of what's going on in the story at that at that moment with you and your dad um, but you kind of, it's that moment we all have like, okay, this, you know, it, it was very reminiscent. You go back to in your life, when was that moment that you, you know, like that, that you had. And I just thought that was so beautifully shot. Um, and maybe it was just because it was very personal for me, but I just thought that was such a great moment. And then my, one of my other moments was, um, when uh, Aunt Val, and my name's Val, so of course I love this character. Um, <laughs> when you're describing like what's going on and she's not supposed to know, you're trying to take care of her the whole movie, right? And then she walks in, she hears everything um, and she, you're like, you smoking a cigarette? And she's like, no. And let me tell you, like, she's like, let me fix everything for you. And I just thought that was such a great moment because the whole movie you're trying to like protect her. And then she's like, oh no, I can like, let me in on this. I'm going to help you out. I'm going to make this all happen. Um, how fun was that um, with, you know, these different characters as you saw them grow, um, you know, that was what was fun for me is like seeing them kind of develop and grow throughout the whole movie and then you know these little surprises with like aunt val and you know i'm not going to give away the ending there's a little bit of a surprise in the ending as well um but so much fun so john as you're as you're creating these characters you know having so many characters i i forgot counting uh, you know i was counting like how many characters there are on this movie but you don't get lost you know, how, how was it to say, you know, this could be overwhelming, but it's not. We get to know each one of these characters and love them by the end, even the villains. Yeah, even the villains. Yeah. I mean, that was as key for us is that we made, uh, you know, uh, taking from your Italian, uh, your family, Scorsese and Tarantino. Um, what I love about those directors is they, they, they set films in, in these kind of, uh, in these worlds where these, these are bad guys, but, but, um, you love the characters, you know, because the characters are flawed and they're human beings and they, they're charming and they have families and they have friends and they make jokes and they see parts of life. So you have to show those kind of elements, I think, in a, in a bad guy and an in, in antagonist, even like Tariq. He has to be this guy that you think you wouldn't mind hanging out with him and having a drink with him or 
you know, even having them around to a, a braai or a barbecue kind of thing. So I think it's important to have set all that up. And those those directors in particular do that so well. And so that's why I wanted to make Tariq this kind of lovable rogue. That, that he's a cool guy, but then he just turns into this this nasty dude. Like I saw something recently where um, someone was talking about Goodfellas, where they, you watch Goodfellas for ages and ages, and these guys are cool. You're hanging out with them. They're so nice. Until the moment that Joe Pesci kills the guy for mixing up his drink, you know, and then you go, oh, shit, okay, okay. Oh, yeah. Go, hey, hey, bad guy. Um, so you get the feeling with not giving away too much of a film, but there's moments like that that happen in the film where you go, hang on, this got serious now. Hang on, shit, that's, these are serious guys. They, they're they robbing a bank and they have guns, and it's so it's quite crazy. So I, it's just a fun thing about making a film is balancing doing an ensemble and balancing all the characters and giving them enough screen time. Um, and Val in particular was beautiful because, you know, she starts off, she's this little petite lady, you know, she seems like she's not the mate. She is the matriarch, but she seems like she's kind of not in the foreground. But by the end, you, like the scene you talk about, she's smoking a joint. She tells these these kids who've been there, who've been her boys for their whole lives and looked up to that she was a lady of the night, that she, you know, she almost ran a brothel. And, and, the t <laughs> and they're suddenly like, Auntie Val? What have you done with my Auntie Val? <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> so it was, it was fun, mate. It's fun, fun working in an ensemble. It, it was just, yeah, it was great. Well, I, I, I very much enjoyed the film from, again, the cinematography to the acting, the characters, the music that was involved. Um, I feel like is its own character. Um, and I feel like everybody needs to have one of those outfits just for at least, you know, a random Tuesday um, because it, it just makes your day. But um... <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll get you one. We'll get you one. Okay. Just a random Tuesday. But but the, I feel like the music, both the music that were played in the scenes and obviously the music that was played live um, and represented for this culture was a character in itself. Um, and to have that, um, I think a lot of people think they understand what carnival is in different countries right because we see it and but it's this myth and i think in this movie um it makes something larger than life feel like you're experiencing it you know right then you you now are connected to the people that play this music that that have this tradition um and i feel like it's going to be something that now people are going to like be Googling and look up and be like, how can I learn more about this? Which is really cool. I think for me, that's a successful movie is when you take something from the movie and then you want to go learn more about it. So I congratulate all three of you on uh, a movie that I enjoyed and I hope I get to see again um, on the big screen and not watching it on my computer. Um, and uh, anything else you, anybody wants to say before we're done today? I really appreciate all of your time. Yeah, are you going to be in Toronto? I'm not. I'm actually um, in Seattle right now for a, another convention. So I wish that I was going to be there and I have another convention next week. It is it, it is the season right now, right? So I appreciate getting to do this uh, wherever we all are. So. Uh, cool. Cool. <laughs> Anybody else want to say anything about the convention or when to see the movie? Or Yeah. I just wanted uh, to yeah, say, I just, uh, uh, as a, uh, it was just a real joy to work with with the actors that, that you're talking to. We had a great um, chemistry on set. They all live together in the same kind of uh, commune, uh, communal area in Cape Town. And they, it was crazy because, you know, sometimes when actors have the day off, they kind of want to stay away from the set because the set's, you know, pressurized and there's drama. And But all of the guys, like everyone who wasn't, called on that day would pop into sets just to hang out with everybody and that's when i realized when we were doing the carnival scene on the streets and it was just it was um jacques and keenan were, were there and then um shamila had arrived on set and, and we said like what are you doing is your day off and she's like no 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 i, I just i was missing you guys <laughs> i wanted to come chill so she had made like real friendships with all the actors that so much so that she wanted to be on set on a day off so it was just we were so lucky we, we had a great vibe and it's uh it was a it was a pleasure to make the film it was my easiest directing gig by far <laughs> thanks john all credit to john um just to add to on to what john said as much as this film is about family we literally i feel like we've be, we've all become family you know that's definitely yeah. a sort of connection that will 
transcend and last for as long as you know as long as we're together and as long as we stay alive i think this is definitely a standout moment in my career um having met these people having worked with people like Jacques, Shamila, Bronte, John in particular um yeah it's definitely it's 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 really i mean even when we text each other i just like oh it's like i'm texting my brother or <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, it, it, it really did it shifted something in my sort of headspace and, and and it was definitely one of the best films i've i've, I've worked on to date very cool jacques well, anything I, I, thank you for doing for, for doing such an astute interview. I just I really appreciate the time that you've taken. You, uh, like it, it feels like you thought about it, and you're, um, it means a lot. Thank you. Um, I feel like it's 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 lovely to be able to talk about the film um, with someone who respects film and and, and has taken the time to like uh, to put the yeah, what you put the thoughts <laughs> <Great. Twice. laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I really appreciate uh, you all getting together with me today and congratulations on such a great film. Um, I will make sure that uh, in the comments below when the interview is posted that it will um, have all the information about where to see the film, when to see the film, um, and good luck uh, at the festival and with everything else. I hope to see this um, be picked up for the big screen so we can... Uh, you know, I can I can take some viewers in my home state of Utah when this comes out. So worldwide. Utah. 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 <laughs>